Okay, now we have our three pages. Let's add the panel for the menu system. So we'll go up to page one here, and we're going to add a panel. And I'm going to just take all the defaults for that. So a panel opens and closes. It collapses. Um, it basically self-hides, if you will. And let's add three items to it. So this is like a menu, like you'd see in a Facebook application or something like that. So let's go with uh, corporate uh, contacts. And let's go with a... Um, uh, we're going to go with uh, device contacts. That's for page three. And we're going to code fun stuff. And while we're in here, I'm going to go ahead and link it up to page three. And go to page two. Notice I use the pound sign, standard jQuery stuff there. And uh, pound page one. All right, so does that look good? Okay. And you can see there it gives us the preview right there. Hit finish. Drop that in. Now you don't actually see it right away because you gotta have you gotta expose it. By default, the menu is hidden, the panel is hidden. So let's uh, open it up with this button right here. So these panel one. Uh, we're gonna come in here and say we want the bars icon for this button and icon only. And hit finish. All right. So let's see. There he is. Okay. So there we go. So there's our device contacts. Fun stuff. Oh, I forgot to add the back button there. Um, so we got to use this back button here. And then he can go back to the, the main page. OK? OK. So that gives us a quick and dirty, you know, what our kind of basic user interface or our user interface would look like. Um, now let's go add some functionality to it. So the next area I want to focus on is for the enterprise contacts. You saw earlier where it says page contact goes here. And what I'm going to do is drop in a list view there. So we're going to go to list view. And we're going to call this the contacts list view. The list view, the list view is something you use a lot. And so we're going to remove this piece. Okay, hit save. All right, so one, two, three. That's the default settings. Now let's add some code to it. So there's an index.js that's already out here. And it's already set up to handle the device ready function. So um, let's go and edit this device ready. Okay. So I'm going to basically, when the device is ready, go out to the cloud and download some data. Okay, so in this case, it's a standard REST endpoint. It's a JAXRS, JPA-enabled REST endpoint you see in Java E6. What any REST point would do, if it's Ruby on Rails or PHP, it doesn't really matter. But I have it running. Uh, this is actually our standard uh, quick start for HTML5 development and deployed up to OpenShift using OpenShift Wizard and JBDS. So basically, if you follow the previous tutorials of HTML5 project, OpenShift application, that's what you get up there in the cloud. And I just added some data to it. And so this is the URL for me uh, up there in the cloud. And then um, basically what happens here is it's going to pull down the data. And there's the data right there. It's going to iterate through that data, poking it, or pushing it into a, an array of items. Right, That's what the push means. And then it's going to append it to the list view. Um, of course, it empties the list view up here. So item 1, 2, and 3 disappear, and the actual names appear and then does a refresh. So it's, if I did that correctly, you can see there's the names populating right there. OK, so it went out to the internet, went out to the cloud, downloaded the data, displayed it right there. So we can keep going to town now. Let's go to the fun stuff page and go back over here to our, our user interface, the HTML itself. Go down here to page 3. OK, I use this outline view for my navigation. OK, and on page 3, we're going to add three little divs for holding the accelerometer changes. So we're going to add an accelerometer feature just for fun. We're going to put that in there. And you can see there's the fun stuff x, y, and z. And then, um, yeah. And then what, but what I could do is I could add a back button right while I'm in here. So let's just copy and paste the back button from the previous page and then add it in here. All right. So there's our, there's our back button now. All right. Very nice. And then so once we have our little accelerometer setting, we need to add the code that basically says, listen for accelerometer changes successfully or error, and then register to listen for those changes. So we're going to just grab this block of code right here, and we're going to go to our index.js as well. And we're going to add those functions right here. OK. And then we're going to add the listening code, Okay, the guy listening for changes. And we're going to add it right here. OK. Now, it doesn't change. It doesn't start listening automatically um, because I don't have all the plugins installed yet. So what happened with uh, Apache Cordova 3, it used to be accelerometer and things like that were in the core. Now it's all part of a plugin. You have to actually independently say, I want these features. 
And it's actually very nice. It makes it much more flexible, makes it also lighter weight. But you do now have to know, like there's a motion plugin which handles the accelerometer uh, APIs. So when I hit finish there, you can see now it, it basically has accelerometer X, Y, and Z zero. And now I can really use my emulator to have some fun with it. Okay. So again, I'm just I'm still in the simulated environment, but I'm using the Ripple emulator here, and I can use the Ripple emulator to interact with the accelerometer, change geolocation, uh, maybe may changes to connection type. Um, uh, you know, change your lat long, things of that nature. So you can see how your app responds to those things. Now, it's not it's not actually going to constrain the network in any significant way if you say come down to cell 2G, um, but it allows you in your AP, using the Cordova APIs to know if you're in 2G mode, 3G mode, Wi-Fi mode, and maybe you'll make a different decision, like download a bunch of data on Wi-Fi, but don't download a bunch of data um, on on um, uh, on 3G, as an example. All right, switch to Windows Basic mode. Maybe that'll make everything much happier now. So we got the accelerometer in place. And now let's go back to our, our second page. Okay, let's add some more functionality there. Dun, bum, bum. I'm going to add another list view right here. So the palette, list view. Okay, and this one, let's call it device contacts. So again, using a device specific feature, I'm going to say I want the device contacts and go to index.js here and let's go look at see what that page looks like boom boom okay and actually I need to add a little bit more user interface construct now I think about it let's scroll down here I want to add a button so we don't want to just grab the contacts with the device ready we want to grab the contacts when the user hits the button uh, and the reason I do that is I have a lot of contacts on my phone so let's go here and paste that in okay not very pretty but we can right click and say source and format and pretty it up a little bit okay and then um, uh, let's add the functions to that or the, the JavaScript functionality so again we have our callbacks you know if you can find the contacts iterate through them display them in the list view just like we did earlier but in this case it's going to be the device contacts so I'm going to put these function callbacks right here okay and then um, if we could look back at my little cheat sheet here I have the button click event. So on click, use the new contact find options. Now let's go and paste it in right here. Okay, new contact find options, find multiple and give me the display name. And then again, navigator contacts.find. So this is similar to what we did with the watch acceleration. Uh, and there's the callbacks on success, on error. Very similar to what you saw here for the watch acceleration. Okay, and again, that's not going to work right out of the gate because we have to install a plugin. So I'm going to say install plugin. Uh, let it load from the download the 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 plugin uh, repository. So just so you know, that's all over here. So the there is a plugin registry, and that's what it's doing. It's downloading all the plugins that are already out there. And you can see there's a ton of them out there already. And I specifically want the contacts one. Okay, not the BlackBerry specific contacts, but the contacts that work on iOS and Android. So that's the second option there. Okay, all goes well, and I have everything installed correctly. We'll click the button, and there they are, found five. All right, so let's say that's our application. We got the accelerometer, we got the enterprise data coming through a standard REST endpoint, we got the local contacts off the device itself, and we have the low accelerometer. That's our application. What you do next is you actually then say, right click, and then you can export it, right? Ex let me click on export real quickly, and you can export it as a native project. So I can export it as an Android project and then use the Android native tooling to take it the rest of the way and get it up to Google for deployment through the Google App Store. Or if I was on a Mac, you would see iOS as an option here too, and it'll kick out an Xcode project for you, and you can take it through the Apple process to put it up in the Apple Store. Um, in this case, I'm gonna say run as Android device and what it's going to do is actually generate for me the Android project, create the APK, and push it out to real device. And while it's trying to do that, let me bring up my camera. Okay, so there, here's my phone. All right, let's move this over here a little bit. So this is my actual phone. It's going through the process now of generating in the background. So this guy's plugged in via USB. He's got his developer options, debugging options turned on. And as it goes through the process over here in Eclipse, it's going to build the project, install it, there it is, and then run it. And so so there's the first screen, and there it downloaded from the internet, the contacts. If I go to fun stuff, there's the accelerometer and go crazy with it there. Okay, 
and then uh, let's go look at the device contacts let's see here okay now let's go so let's go. it says finding and this takes a little while because it's got to load all the contacts and I have 2400 plus contacts on this device based on my Google account and the funny thing is most of them have null as their display name so that'll show up in a few seconds um, but you can see while that thing is turning away there, there it is you know you can practice your scrolling too but this is an HTML5 JavaScript based application using jQuery mobile and Cordova to build a real app and to make kind of make that point if I go down over here you can see there's the app it's just any other app if I want to uninstall it I can come over here and say uninstall all right and wipe it out just like any other application all right and if I want to send that app now in you know to my other friends and family I can so quick recap go back to JBoss Central you install the hybrid tooling from the software update tab right here JBoss hybrid mobile tools you get to it by saying control N and then hybrid all right that's where we kind of hidden it for now you get next you fill in three fields again this is basically a package name this is kind of the the name of the thing you'll see on the device and then of course this is the project name you see in Eclipse you hit finish there and then you open up the index HTML use our jQuery mobile palette to do the editing use your Cordova sim interactively again enable live reload right to make as you make changes and hit save as long as you have that live reload server turned on there you'll see those changes update automatically over here you can use ripple environment uh, to make you know to play with it a little bit and then when you're ready to kick it out to the real device you can either export the project or do run as run on Android device and that will work as long as you know the uh, the Android SDK is installed like I have the ADB devices it tells me there is a device connected via USB so just keep that in mind you gotta have the SDK installed I have it installed right here and actually the first time you run our hybrid tooling it will ask you for where the Android SDK is you can see under hybrid mobile here uh, in my case I had to come in here and make that setting so it'll, it'll prompt you and say where's your SDK installed if you can't find it alright well that's it summarized if you have any questions feel free to reach out to us or me specifically on Twitter or hit us up in the forums. Thank you very much.